Long ago, a being known as the Machine came to Earth thousands of years ago to transform the human population into killing machines called mutants. For this reason, ancient tribes successfully sealed the Machine and the mutants on the ground somewhere in Europe. At present, it is the year 2707, and four major corporations are now ruling the world. These four corporations are in a perpetual war with each other over Earth's remaining resources. Currently, another battle is being conducted between the European borders of Bauhaus and Capital. During this battle, the machine seal is accidentally uncovered and destroyed by artillery fire, thereby releasing the mutants back to the already war-torn world. With the re-emergence of the mutants, the soldiers from both opposing sides soon find a common and overpowering enemy. Once they kill the soldiers, the mutants then drive their bodies to the great hole in the ground and into the machine, transforming them into mutants. Soon after, the mutants spread into the world, causing chaos to the world that even the four corporations cannot stop. Thus, an order dedicated to preserving the seal is quickly informed about this terrifying event. The leader of these people, Samuel, reads the Chronicles to guide him through the right path. The Chronicles, a biblical kind of book, details a prophecy of a great man defeating the machine. And so Samuel travels to a building to seek the leaders of the four corporations and plead for the fulfillment of this prophecy. One of the leaders, Constantine, proposes that they should evacuate instead to another planet rather than fight the mutants head on. Of course, Samuel disagrees with this idea. He then asks for 20 men and a ship that will go down the hole to destroy the machine. A few moments later, the chaos continues in the streets. Constantine has decided to be left behind while others evacuate to another planet. He finally grants Samuel's request of having a ship, although it will only hold less than 20 soldiers. With this, Samuel travels with the ship that was supposed to be Constantine's ride to safety. Soon after, Constantine gets surrounded by the mutants. Afterward, Samuel heads to a bar to recruit a soldier named Hunter for the mission to destroy the machine. Initially, Hunter refuses the offer to save mankind. Hearing this, Samuel offers him an evacuation ticket so he can leave Earth. It is here that Hunter has decided to join Samuel's crusade, giving the ticket instead to the wife and daughter of his fallen comrade named Nate. With this, Samuel has finally completed his list of soldiers, Jesus, John, Valerie, Juba, Maximilian, Hunter, and Severian, all coming from different corporations. After the soldiers assemble, they are briefed about the mission at hand. In destroying the machine, they will use a device whose effects are still unknown. As such, the chance of the device being explosive is a gamble they must take. To prepare themselves for the mission, Maximilian presents the group a captured mutants so that they find out its weaknesses and strengths. So far, they know that the mutants are immune to bullet fire but susceptible to explosions and swords. With this, the Order conducts one last mass to pray for Samuel and his group while the soldiers have their last night of freedom and enjoyment. The following day, after they have been given each a sword, the soldiers finally embark on their quest to save mankind. While aboard a flying ship that is en route to the Great Hole, the soldiers talk with each other. All of a sudden, a rogue ship is heading towards them at full speed, causing them to change their direction. But the rogue ship, which is driven by a mutant, eventually rams into their ship, damaging their vehicle. For this reason, the soldiers quickly head to the ship's escape pod with the explosive device. When the chute does not activate, the captain of the ship sacrifices his life for them by pulling it, thereby letting the soldiers successfully escape without him. While falling, Hunter opens the first parachute but it gets immediately cut due to the weight of their escape pod. Juba suggests that they should pull the second parachute when they are near the ground to slow down their fall. Before the ship hits the ground, it plunges first straight into a building. After passing through that, they then pull the second parachute. It is a success as they all live the crash. However, one of them, John, gets injured from the debris of the building earlier. Because he is certainly dying anyway, John asks for a grenade to eliminate himself. Afterward, the rest of the soldiers continue their mission. Since they have crashed some miles away from their intended location, they have to pass through a ruined city. There. They see some refugees rushing to an escaping ship where some corrupt soldiers are asking for payment to get aboard the vehicle. Hunter is disgusted by this display so he quickly walks to the corrupt soldiers and shoots at one of them. He then instructs the remaining soldiers to let all refugees aboard. Just like that, Hunter returns to his group to continue the quest. As the day turns to night, the soldiers reach a dark catacomb where many bones are placed. To get to their goal, they descend into an underground skyscraper. The first men to drop down are Hunter and Samuel. At first, they think that the dark skyscraper is bottomless because they cannot see the ledge where they are supposed to land. Here, Samuel accidentally falls but he, fortunately, lands on the ledge. 
However, he gets immediately attacked by a mutant, causing Hunter to fall as well. They closed a metal door to hold the mutant inside the building. Other soldiers who are following them stop on the rope due to the mutant's presence. With quick thinking, Hunter and Samuel defeat the mutant by burning its face and slicing its head off. Meanwhile, Juba, who was left at the top to guard them, fires at some mutants heading his way. However, due to a surprise mutant attack, Juba uses his grenade launcher, causing the elevator where he is standing to fall. Down below, the other soldiers also fight against a horde of mutants. But Juba's elevator falls right on top of the mutants. As one final sacrifice, Juba uses his grenade to finish off the remaining mutants. Since they have reached a dead end, the soldiers rest for a while. Samuel tells Hunter not to lose faith in their mission. He then pours water on the ground which flows on a hidden drainage. Following the drainage, the soldiers carefully walk on a narrow walkway. Below them, Hunter sees his supposedly dead comrade, Nate, being dragged away by the mutants. The soldiers convince him to continue their mission but Hunter stubbornly wants to rescue his friend. As such, he deviates from the rest of the group, embarking on his solo mission. He manages to rescue Nate from the mutant holding him, then carries him on his back and promptly returns to his team. However, even before they can reach the team, the dying Nate tells Hunter to leave him and continue his mission of saving the world. For this reason, Hunter kills his friend so he can finally rest from his suffering. Meanwhile, Samuel and the others cross a narrow stone bridge. Underneath them, hordes of mutants continue to drag both wounded and dead human soldiers into the machine. As they carefully cross the bridge, Maximilian accidentally falls into the lair of the mutants. He tries his best to fight them but in vain, they are simply too many for him to survive. Valerie jumps down to assist him despite Samuel's insistence to continue the mission. Jesus, Samuel, and Severian also jump in to help. However, Jesus gets a little too excited using his grenade launcher, causing it to heat up and eventually explode on his face. Samuel also gets killed, which is too shocking for the silent Severian. Eventually, Hunter arrives but he is already too late. Severian informs Hunter that their allies have been dragged to the machine. Learning this, he takes Samuel's Chronicles book with him, although Severian warns that he is not allowed to read its contents. When Hunter urges her to read what it says, Severian admits that she cannot read, which means they do not know the next step to take. Hunter is angered by this but he has no choice but to continue the mission with her because it is their duty. And so, they plant some explosives at the mouth of the cave. While they are doing this, they see Maximilian and Valerie being dragged by some mutants. It is here that Hunter activates the explosives to distract the enemies while also blocking the entrance. He then punches a mutant into a hole full of spikes. Then, he checks on the two of them to see if they are alright. Upon seeing that the machine is through the hole where the mutant fell, Hunter devises a plan where Valerie and Severian drop down the hole via rope. As they slowly descend, Hunter notices that the blocked entrance is being torn down from the outside so they have to move faster. To buy them more time, Maximilian decides to sacrifice himself by standing in front of the blocked entrance and detonating a grenade. The explosion accidentally causes Hunter to stumble down the hole. Hunter gets stuck in the machine's mechanism. As he is being dragged toward the machine, Hunter is branded on the neck and gets injected with a strange fluid. A robot attempts to poke his head with a sharp object, but Hunter manages to avoid it. He then escapes his entanglement and shoots the robot down. He later meets up with the two women, although he now appears to be half mutant. But still retaining his humanity, he asks for the explosive device. Together, the two women fight off the mutants while Hunter connects the device to the heart of the machine. Despite this, there is still a missing step to fulfill, so he asks to see the Chronicles book. As this happens, Severian reunites with now mutant Samuel, and a battle ensues between them. In the end, mutant Samuel wins. At the same time, Valerie also dies by falling down the platform and into a rotating blade. Standing face to face with mutant Samuel, Hunter fights him in hand to hand combat. While fighting him, Hunter sees the sword-shaped key that will activate the explosive device on the ground. Immediately, he stabs mutant Samuel with it, piercing through his body and into the machine's heart, thereby activating it. Hunter then jumps into the darkness below to avoid the possible explosion. Fortunately, he lands on water. However, it turns out that the device is not an explosive but rather a key for the machine to fly out of Earth. With the mission now finished, Hunter lights a cigarette as he looks at the night sky. The movie is entertaining enough despite its awful effects and bad acting in some of its parts. It preaches the idea that no matter how much animosity people have against each other, they can put this all aside to stand against a common enemy. This is now a timely message in that we can perhaps relate the machine to current problems like poverty and pollution, and that working together despite our differences will make the world a better place.